Okay, how about we tie a Gary LaFontaine Sparkle Caddis Pupa. This is a uh, great little caddis emerger pattern. It's been around forever. It's very popular and uh, almost everyone you see tied commercially is tied poorly. So we're going to uh, do a few little tricks and I'll try to clear this up a little bit for you. Um, I tie mine on a 100 SPBL TMCO hook. Um, this is going to be a size 16 and I'm going to use some camel colored ADOT unit thread. And I'm going to take my thread and just get it started a couple eye lengths behind the hook eye. So I'm just going to get that thread started. And then I'm going to take a piece of sparkle yarn. So this is tan sparkle yarn. And I use tan on all the colors of caddis that I tie. Um, no matter what color the dubbing, dubbing is going to be, I always use the tan sparkle yarn. And you can see this is three individual strands. Get those separated. When I peel those apart, there's three strands. So I'm going to take a single one of those strands. And I'm going to brush it out with a call your dubbing brush so that I've got a piece that's spread out like so. And what I'm going to do is I'll kind of twist up the end and cut the tip square like so. Now I'm going to lay this on the hook and catch it with a couple turns and draw those ends down to length. And I just want to capture that. Now this is the trick to kind of getting the nice shell that envelops the, the hook here. I'm going to spread this yarn out a bit. I'm going to push this down around the hook bend. So see how it's down around both sides of the hook bend as I wrap back over it. And I'm going to wrap all the way back to the bend. So that is around the hook shank back there at the back. Then I'm going to take some olive hair tron dubbing, hair tron dubbing, uh, which is rabbit and antron and I chop it a bit just because the rabbit fur by itself is fairly long. I want sort of a coarse little mixture and I'm going to dub this on and I don't have to dub terribly tightly. I want this to be sort of a shaggy body all said and done. And I'm going to dub, I'm going to start at the front and I'm going to dub backwards. Now what I want to do is build a reverse taper. Caddis pupa, which is what this imitates, have a body that is fatter at the back than it is at the front. So I'm going to dub back to the back. And you notice when I run out of dubbing, my thread is at the bend. So now I'm going to take my thread, and this is my variation on the theme, and I'm just going to use that brown thread as a rib forward through that dubbing. You can see that just adds a bit of segmentation. That's just something I've always done on mine, and it works, so I keep doing it. So now I'm going to take that dubbing brush and I want to separate out this yarn. I've got the end a little tangled here, so I'm going to cut that off. I want to separate out this yarn. You can see how I just kind of fan it out around the back of the hook. I'm going to take my fingertip and push right up against the bend, and you can see how that will splay those fibers out. I want to sweep everything forward. Try to get all those fibers pulled forward around the body, and you can see how I've got those Pull tight, get my fingers in there on the screen. I'm going to lighten that up just a bit. So I'm going to sweep all that forward. And you can see I've got that pulled tight out over the hook eye. That I'm going to push back. And you can see how that'll form our little case around it. And you can see how sparse that is. That's one of the things that I notice on almost all the commercial versions. They've got way too much overbody. So I want to keep that real sparse. I'm going to buckle that back a bit. And then come in with my material hand and tie that down with a few turns. So it's just a sparse little shuck. Those are air bubbles is what that's supposed to be. It's not the body of the fly. It's just sort of a highlight around the body of the fly. Now to create the shuck that hangs off the back, this is a cool little trick. And this is actually one of Gary LaFontaine's tricks that was in one of his books. So I'm going to take the tips of my scissors and on top here, I'm going to lift up a bit of that yarn. And I'm going to take my scissor tips and just trim a few fibers out. And they'll hang out the back like so. So that even further sparsened that up a bit. Now I want to anchor this front end down tight and clip those butt ends off. Just wrap down smoothly over that. So a pretty sparse little fly as of right now. If these ends are a little too square for your taste, you can come in and rag them up a bit. Like so. Now a lot of guys will dub the head on this fly. I really like it. And again, this is an original LaFontaine thing. I really like to use... Wooly Bugger Marabou. This is nice, thick, 
plumed marabou fibers. And what I'm going to do is sort of treat it like an ostrich. I'm going to lighten up one more notch here. So I'm going to treat this marabou like an ostrich. I'm going to take probably eight or ten fibers and peel them off so I've got a nice little clump like this, like so. And what I want to do is hold on to the tip ends. And I'll use my fingers to separate. You can see how thick the individual flues on that marabou are. So I'm going to create a separation point, just like tying a hackle feather in by its tip. So I'm going to create a separation point there and tie that down. Trim the tips out. Now one of the big tricks to wrapping this, um, and again, we're just going to treat this like a soft hackle feather. It's a tiny little marabou soft hackle feather. But one of the tricks to getting it folded is to wet your fingers. And you can see how I can sweep those fibers back. And that's what's going to create this nice flowing head on this fly. So I'm going to make a turn, sweep that back, make another turn, and maybe one more in there. And you can see as I'm getting closer to the butt ends of the fibers, that mar those marabou fibers are getting a little longer. Come in and tie that off just up behind the eye. I've got one that I missed in there. That's not a big deal. You can get rid of him easily enough. I'll trim those stems out. I'm going to sweep everything back. I just wetted my fingers a bit. I'm going to sweep everything back and just build a clean little thread head to cover those stubs. Then whip finish on top. I see it. Let's see if we can get rid of it. I think we got it. You can see what I pop that up a bit, how we've got a nice little soft tackle collar. You can use a, uh, a dubbing brush. Let's see if I can find my small one here to pull out any trapped fibers in that collar. And then I'm going to come in with the tips of my scissors and just trim that flat across the top so that all those appendages are just hanging down. Sweep everything back, and there's a finished sparkle caddis pupa with a soft tackle marabou collar. Um, really undersung little fly. This is a great, uh, even just sort of searching pattern. This is a, a bug that fish see a lot during the summer, even uh, even when there's not necessarily a caddis hatch going on. If there is a caddis hatch going on, it's just money in the bank. But um, I used to fish this fly a lot on the plat just in the afternoons as a uh, behind a worm, just a general attractory kind of thing, but very common bug in the water. Fish are used to seeing it and they, they eat them really well. So size so 16 and 18 typically, this kind of pale olive color is a really good one. Um, obviously you can time in whatever colors you, you need to match your local caddis, but there's the sparkle caddis pupa from Gary LaFontaine. Tie up some old school flies, try those too, the fish don't know. Bye.